Do you need a TFTP server when you're working on Windows? Well, you actually can download TFTP D32 or TFTP D64. But what if you're actually on a Mac OS computer? What options do you have? Well, I'm Ronnie Wong, and I'm here to tell you what the pros know. All right, so when I began working with Cisco equipment, I was using, of course, a Windows computer or a Windows laptop, and it was fairly easy for me to gain access to TFTP. And the way I did it by downloading a simple utility called TFTP32. At that point, of course, today it's actually TFTP64. But then I started using a Mac OS computer, and I realized something. There was nothing as easy as TFTPD, well, in Mac OS land. So I had to actually see if I could find alternatives, and every alternative that I found was a little bit more challenging to actually get working than I thought it would be. But in Mac OS, there is actually a built-in TFTP server that you can use to help you out with your Cisco tasks, such as, of course, being able to transfer files as you need to, and actually being able to use any of these utilities are actually fairly easy. But it doesn't mean that it's actually on by default. So there are a couple of commands that we need to make sure that you understand, and also, of course, the location of where you're going to store your files on your Mac OS computer to do so. So on the screen, what we have here, of course, is that I am actually using the terminal on my Mac OS, and I've already used SSH. Actually, I've closed it out here. I uh, use SSH here, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and SSH into my particular switch that I have set up for us that we are going to use this with. So this way, we can actually ensure that we're actually doing a very live demonstration here as we do so. So I'm going to switch back over to my terminal, and here it is. On my Mac OS machine, there's a place in which we're actually going to use here. So by default, this is actually a hidden location on your Mac OS machine. And let me see if I can zoom in so that we can see it. And you'll simply use the Go feature and then go to Folder. And when you do that, you just type in slash private slash TFTP boot. And that is going to be the location of where you would put the files that you're going to end up using to, well, go ahead and be able to transfer it as you need to. Now, for doing this demo, I have two different uh, iOSs here, right, that I'm actually going to be using, my 3750 machine. And so currently I know that on that machine, I have this 12.2-55 uh, uh, image, but I want to actually put this 15.2-4 image on that same machine. So of course, that means I need to go ahead and get this set up so that from that switch, I can use TFTP to copy the files over from this server. So let's go ahead and get the server set up and then we'll verify, of course, that the switch is also set up as well. So let me go back into the terminal. And from the terminal side of things, it's actually not a very difficult command. We'll start off with sudo and then launch ctl load dash capital F. And then we have to do a system library. And then there's a launch daemons. And then tftp dot plist. So that's going to go ahead and begin the launch of this. And I have to, of course, type in my password because it is changing the system. And now I need to go ahead and start up the service. So now that I've launched it, I need to go ahead and start that up. So the same format, launch CTL, and then start. And this time we're going to call upon that particular com file. And this one is a little bit tricky here. Make sure you add in that last D in there or it's not going to work. And so it is running. Now, how can I verify that it's running? Well, what we'll do is we'll do a net stat and then ATP. We'll go ahead and grep that to TFTP. Oops, let me verify. I'm actually typing in the correct. Oh, I forgot my modifier, which is UDP here, what I actually needed. And here in a moment, if everything is actually running, we'll see that UDP for uh, version four, as well as for IP version six is actually up and running. If it's not running, you won't see any output at all. It'll simply just go to the next prompt. So now that we have this up and running, we now need to go ahead and set permissions on that uh, folder that we talked about, which is gonna be that private and then TFTP boot uh, folder. 
So we need to change the permissions there. So we're going to do a ch, a sudo chmod. And we're going to do 777. Seven. And we'll tell it private. Then tftp boot. That's changing the permissions on the folder. And then chmod 777. Same location. tftp boot. And this time, we're going to tell it, go ahead and give it access to all the files that we need to be able to read and write and execute from that folder as we choose to. So now everything is set up the way that we should actually have it and everything should be ready to go on my TFTP server side, which is on my Mac OS. Now over on the switch, we need to see if we can get this to work here. All right, so I need to find out the IP address before I go ahead and connect and try and do what I need to. So let me go ahead and do that as well. So I am simply going to well, I'll connect here. And then I need this IP address, 10.0.14.172. All right, so with this, let me verify, ping 10.0.14.172, verify that we're on the same network and we do see that I'm on the same network so I know I'm good. And this is the address that I need if I'm going to use TFTP. So it's from here, I type in copy TFTP colon, and then I'm telling it I want to copy it to the flash on this switch. So now it's asking me for the address, which is going to be 10.0.14.172. And it's asking me for the source file name. So on the source file name, let me see if I can find that. There it is. So there's the 15.2. So I'm going to copy, oh, I zoomed in a bit, and I'm going to paste that there. Now, I haven't actually copied it uh, to the actual machine yet, but overall though, if this actually does work, it actually will tell me uh, if I copied it over, it should give, give me a, a couple of different things. So uh, from here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now it's asking for the destination. So if there's a duplicate, it probably ends up with like a one after it or a two as what we'll actually see. So now it's trying to access that TFTP server, and if everything is actually working correctly the way we, it should be, then in a moment we should see it actually start to do the copying process that it needs to. It should either come in the form of exclamation points, or it's actually going to come in the form of, well, little periods that will tell us that we're dropping the actual packets. If we do see periods. If it drops one, it's not a bad thing. If it drops two, more than likely you're gonna get a corrupted image. But you see the process actually happening at this point. Now, because of the way that we're actually doing this and over the connection that we're doing it on, this may take a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll fast forward this using, of course, well, TV magic. All right, now, that actually took uh, a few minutes before it actually kind of did everything that we needed to, but you only thought of it probably about, you know, what, a tenth of a second or so. So as we actually take a look at this, how do I know that it's copied it? I type in D-I-R flash, if I can spell flash. And now you see the copying of the file here. So here is the original image that I had on the machine. And here's the one that I just copied over, which is right here, okay? So that one actually does copy it over. And now if I choose to, there are different commands that I can run, of course, to choose to actually accept this one instead of the original boot image, which is gonna be the other one that you see up there. So that is how we can actually use, of course, the TFTP server that is built right in to our Mac OS. Now, there's one other thing we want to do, which is, of course, not leave it uh, on the machine running. So there is one other command that I need to show you at the end here. So when we go back over, and I'm now switched back over to my terminal here, is that it's really kind of the same command as we ran initially, which is going to be the launch load dash capital F command. And what we want to do instead is actually launch unload and now it's going to ask for my password on my machine it doesn't look like it did much but let's go ahead and see if we can find that netstat command again and this time in a moment notice that it doesn't show anything running we never want to leave the tftp server running we simply turn it off when we're actually done so if you actually ever are running on a mac os machine 
and you need a TFTP server, it's built right in, and now you know what the pros know.